Lift up mine eyes to the hills from west come with my help. My help cometh from the Lord. The Lord which made heaven and earth. He is said, He will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord which keepeth thee. He will not slumber nor sleep. For the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade. Upon thy right hand, upon thy right hand. No, there, sun shall not smite thee by day. Not the moon by night, he shall preserve thy soul, even forevermore. Oh, Unto the hills, he's my strength. All of my help cometh from the Lord. My help, my help, my Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome, amazing people. It's your favorite girl, Princess Gleason, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> what do we do in the chapter every day? We get to study the Word of God together, know who we are in Christ, the power we possess, the things we should and should not do so that we can end up living a beautiful Christian life here on earth and also spend eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view, that's the whole idea. We all desire to live the Christ life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Okay, so we always pray, hand over the session to God, and then we'll get to the birthday party after which we have the Bible party. The birthday party is taken from the book, no, the Bible party is taken from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 25, and it has 44 verses. So let's pray and hand over the session to God before get into the birthday party father we thank you for this day you've made we rejoice and be glad in it we thank you for protection permission we thank you for guidance we thank you for all that you've done you're doing and you're still to do in our lives so oh god we thank you for the sin and unseen battles you fought for us we thank you for all the goodness all the faithfulness all the loving kindness that you've shown to us you loved us even when we're lovable you still come through for us even when we don't deserve it but because you've just chosen us and you've decided to love us regardless, you're still there for us. Father, we've come to dine and sup again at your table. We pray, O oh God, that our expectation will not be cut off and you're going to minister to us in a very special way. Increase while I decrease, so it's going to be you and you alone. That will be seen, felt, and heard throughout this session of the chapter today. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. It is Bible party time, people. Sorry about that. No, birthday party time. So let's get on with the birthday party. Let's get the birthday party. Birthday party. Okay. Mm, let's find out what is here. So there's just one person on our birthday book today. And uh, she's a very special sister of mine. In the person of Mom, Bibi, 
Mbile. My baby Mbile is actually a nice person, soft-spoken, very calm. I got to know her through my younger sister. My younger sister had known her before. She's my Bacosa sister. And uh, she's a sister by excellence. She can cook for the world. She can also care for the world. Like when she comes to a place, she wants everybody to be happy. She wants everybody to be fine. She wants everybody to be okay. That's exactly how she does. And she's that kind of friend who can make sacrifices for her other friends to have some things, for her other friends to have the best. I've seen her make a couple of sacrifices when they had to do events for my kid sister and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh my God, this girl is really lovely. She's really a sweet person. And of course, she's so cute. <laughs> She's so cute. Ain't Bakasi girls just cute like that? Well, it's a thing with Bakasi girls. You can't, you can't help it. We're just cute like that. Okay, so she's a very cute person. And of course, she's also one who loves to... Um, she's very hardworking and very pushful too. That's one thing I know about her. And what's more? Well, as many as I can remember... That those are the ones I can remember for now, but I know there's just some more that I cannot remember right now. Happy birthday to you, pretty woman. And I pray that God is gonna do much more than you can even ask or imagine this day for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And uh, Amen. So let's just keep going. Why am I having numbers somewhere? And I can't even figure out why I have those numbers. Okay, that's strange. Oh, let's go. So let's pray for Mambi Bimbile and every single person who was born today. Let's get to pray for all these amazing people. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've made. We're joyous and we're glad in it. We thank you for the extra year you've added to the lives of your children. We thank you for giving them an additional year. We thank you for the beautiful stories that you're writing upon the pages of their lives, oh God. Father, I pray that you're going to cause them to be able to do and undo to the glory of your name. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for provision, protection, for guidance. We thank you for opening the windows of heaven and pouring the choices of your blessings upon the lives of your children. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I pray that you rebuke every devourer from their lives. As they start this year, O oh God, that you're going to give them reasons to smile continuously, consistently. That as the, if you tarry to come, they come back here next year, same time. They'll give the testimonies of all the amazing things that you've done in their lives physically on this live stream. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you cause them to be trailblazers, space setters, and wall changers. That you're going to carry them to the place where you want them to be safely and securely to the glory of your name. Father, I also pray, O oh God, that you're going to provide for them. Give them all that it takes to be able to serve you and stay connected to you till the end, O oh Lord. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to open the windows upon of heaven upon their lives perfect all that concerns them give them a sound 126 state a state of continuous laughter singing and rejoicing father that there would no no sad days all their days are going to be beautiful for the entire year that you've added to your lives and you're going to give them many many more years to the glory of your name father i pray that you're going to cause them to increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before men. You're going to cause them to keep shining brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. Lord, that your light is going to so shine through them. And people will see your good works in their lives and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Lord, they're not going to stray the path. They're not going to derail. That if they even get to that point where they want to give up or they want to back out, they'll hear a clean, loud voice that would say, This is the way, walk thou in it. And they'll walk in it and they'll not stray and they'll not depart. And all glory will be given unto your holy name, O God, for all that you do in their lives, you're doing and you're still to do. Father, I pray, O God, 
that you're going to take them to the top and cause them to stay there permanently because you're the master strategist. You're going to teach them all the strategies and techniques that are necessary to get people to the top and not only get there, but stay there permanently. Lord, I pray that you're going to open doors for them that no man can shut and shut every door that is not of you. You're going to divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to progress and divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate or retrogress in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I just bless your holy name, O oh God. I just thank you. I just magnify you because you deserve all the praise. Thank you, Lord God, because I know you always hear and answer. There is none like you in all the earth. You are the faithful Father. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that whatever the lady hands on, you're going to prosper. Wherever they tread their feet upon you, give it to them as a possession. It is your word and will come to you, holding unto you, knowing that your word is here and amen. It never comes and goes back the same. It always accomplishes the purpose for which it is sent. Let your word accomplish the purpose for which it is sent in the lives of these ones who were born today. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to grant them opportunities. That will cause them to stand out and not fit in. Because you called each and every one of us to stand out in our area of specialty. So Lord, I pray that these ones are going to stand out in a very special way. And all glory be given unto your holy name for whatever you'll be doing in their lives. With them, for them, around them, in the mighty name of Jesus. Cause them to be trailblazers, space setters, and wall changers. And give them all that it takes to be able to go and conquer their world in Jesus' name. Open their eyes to see those they're supposed to be destined to help us too. And also help those around them. Open their eyes to to the destiny, to their own destiny help us. And let these people be strategically positioned all around their lives, east, west, north, and south. And do for them that which they need to be done in due time and in the course of time. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because I know you always hear and answer. Take preeminence, put now forevermore. We'll cover every prayer request with the blood of Jesus, knowing that you've done and answered already. So we decree and declare because we know it is sealed, sealed. It is sealed and settled, done and dusted. Thank you, Lord, for answering us always. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say, Amen. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. 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 In our lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in the lives of silver prayers. Amen, 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 amen. With the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. In the lives as we pray. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In the lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in the lives. Amen, people. So let's get right on with the Bible party. Did I get the right? Yeah, I did. I was almost thinking that I got the birthday party wrong. Mm, I'd have been like, maybe man, baby, baby, that needs a double portion of birthday. So it's a Bible party and it's first image of the 25 and he has 44 verses. So let's get this. That's an average read. First Samuel chapter 25. And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him and buried him in his house at Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. And there was a man in Mahon whose possessions were in Carmel. And the man was very great, and he had 3,000 sheep. And a thousand goats, and he was sharing his sheep in Camel. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife Abigail, and she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was, and he was of the house of Caleb. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did share his sheep, and David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young man, Get you up to Camel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus shall he say to him, That liveth in prosperity, 
peace be both to thee and peace be to thine house and peace be unto all that thou hast and now i've heard that thou hast shares now thy shepherds which were with us we heard them not neither was there aught missing unto them all the while they were in camel as thy young men and they will shew thee wherefore let the young men find favor in thine eyes for we come in a good day give i pray thee whatsoever cometh to thine hand to thine hand unto thine servants and to thy son david and when david's young men came they spake to nabal according to all those words in the name of david and ceased and nabal answered david's servants and said who is david and who is the son of jesse there be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master shall i then take my bread and my water and my flesh that i have killed for my shares and give it unto men whom i know not whence they be so david's young men turned their way and went again and came and told him all those things and david said unto his men gird ye on every man his sword and they girded on every man his sword and david also girded on his sword and there went up after david about four hundred men and two hundred abode by the stuff but one of the young men told abigail nabal's wife saying behold david sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master and he railed on them but the men were very good unto us and we were not hurt neither missed we anything as long as we were conversant with them when we were in the fields they were a wall unto us both by night and day all the while we were with them keeping the sheep now therefore know and consider what thou would do for evil is determined against our master and and five now therefore know and consider what thou would do for evil is determined against our master and against all his household for he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. Then Abigail made haste and took two hundred loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of pasched corn and an hundred clusters of raisins and two hundred cakes of figs and laid them on asses. And she said unto her servants, Go on before me, behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. And it was so, as she rode on the ass, that she came down by the covert of the hill. And behold, David and his men came down against her, and she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow had in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertained unto him, and he had required me evil for good. So more also do God unto the enemies of David, if I leave all that pertain to him by the morning light, any that pisseth against the wall. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lit off the ass, and fell before David on her face, and bowed herself to the ground, and fell at his feet, and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be, and let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience, and hear the words of thine handmaid. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belia, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thine handmaid, saw not the young man of my Lord, whom thou didst send. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord had withholden thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let thine enemies, and they that seek evil to my Lord, be as Nabal. And now this blessing which thine handmaid had brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighted the battles of the Lord, and evil had not been found in thee all thy days. 
Yet a man is reason to pursue thee and to seek thy soul. But the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God, and the souls of thine enemies, them shall he sling out, as out of the middle of a sling. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord shall have done to my Lord, according to all that the good, according to all the good that he had spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offence of heart unto my Lord, either that thou hast shed blood causeless, or that my Lord had avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. And blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou, which has kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with mine own hand. For in every deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which had kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hadst hasted and come to meet me, surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light any that pieced against the wall. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him, and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice, and have accepted thy person. And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry with him, for he was very drunken. Wherefore she told him nothing, less or more, until the morning light. But it came to pass in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. And it came to pass about ten days after that the Lord smote Nabal, that he died. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord that had pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and had kept his servant from evil. For the Lord had returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. And David sent and communed with Abigail to take her to him to wife. And when the servants of David were come to Abigail to Camel, they spake unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take thee to him to wife. And she arose and bowed herself on her face to the earth and said, Behold, let thine handmaid be as a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. And Abigail hasted and arose and rode upon an ass with five damsels of hers that went after her. And she went after the messengers of David and became his wife. David also took Ahinoam of Jezreel and there were also both of them his wives. But Saul had given Micah, his daughter, David's wife, to Falti, the son of Laish, which was of Galim. This is the word of the Lord, and all the saints shall say a big thanks be to God. Okay, so let's go. Where does this start? What do we learn? What do we learn? What do we learn? Okay, so this is David who has taken care of lots and lots of people's things. He has guarded many people. He has kept many people's things. And then he gets to this person called Nabal, whom he has protected, his, his RCs, he has protected all that the man has, basically. And the man's servants and all. And then he now realizes that the man is a wealthy man, and so probably the man can give them something to eat. They've been fighting, they've been going for battle, they've been protecting the man's possessions and all those things. And then he's like, okay, so it would be a nice thing that this man can even support us and give us something to eat, just food to eat. We've been in the in the desert for a long while. We've been taking care of his things and all that. See, some of you guys who get to employ people and not pay them, or you, you, you employ people and then after they've worked for you, you make up one bull crap story about the people so that the people are not going to be able to get paid. My dear, God is gonna fight for them. And when he does, you will be so shocked about what God can do in your life. See, 
This people have helped and helped and helped. And he sent. He was very, very humble. The way he sent and then he pleaded and then he even just pleaded that he wanted something to eat before. It's even at the end that he said, ask your um, sheep, ask your shepherds that we've been able to take care of them. We've done everything. So he even actually just had to plead before even presenting the fact that he has helped the man's people. So somebody who hears that, let's just say he was just pleading on a normal basis. He has not done anything yet. But now he has added that, oh, he also helped your family. He also helped your, your people and all these kinds of things. Don't you think it's the best place to help him too? Because if he didn't help and protect your family and do all these things, you will not have them. You will not have them. So for that singular reason, don't you think you were supposed to help him? No, but greed wasn't sounding in this man's ears. But another, another angle, look at it this way as well. I can't blame him so much. Just like he said, is the reality in our generation today. People are moving from one place to another, looking for whatever is not missing. I don't care. Today you come to this um, denomination or to this group or to this ethnic, ethnic area or to this gathering. You come there and maybe something happens to you. Maybe somebody smashes your toe. You leave that place and go to another. There's no place that doesn't have an issue. You go to the next place, they'll not smash your toe, but maybe they'll break your finger. You go to another place, maybe they'll not smash your toe, they'll not break your finger. They might actually hit your hip. You go to every single place has this issue. But when you go there to have an encounter with God, you will not move because you will know that those things are bound to happen in a place called a church. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So if you go to the hospital and a patient mistakenly hits you, you start fighting with that patient. Like, is it even normal? No. So you stop going to the hospital. Maybe you have a patient in the hospital. You stop going to the hospital because one particular patient made a mistake and hit your leg. Or made a mistake and pushed you. Or made a mistake and did something that was not nice to you. You will stop going to the hospital to visit your own patient? No. It's not possible. Because you have a patient there. So the church, basically, like some people say, oh, the church is the hospital. When you get well, you leave from there. The doctors who are working there, the nurses who are working there, are they sick? So there are some places that you are bound to stay there. Not because you are sick, but because you have to help people who are sick. And so, yes, some of us are still in church. We have to fellowship because, one, the Bible tells us to do so. Do not forsake the assembly of the brethren. And also, we have to be there because we also have to be able to serve others. We are safe to serve, not to be served. So, yes. And this man says, okay, David says, okay, help us and give us food. And the man is just haughty. And then he says that, no, while he help you, that he has heard about a couple of people who have... Um, just ran from their masters and they're just going anyhow anyhow so these are the kind of people that in that case as well he was also right to an extent because he needed to be sure but the thing is he had the powers and the ability to be able to fact check whether david was one of such men who just left his master and then was just running helter skelter david's news was not news his wife knew his wife knew about it and his wife could not know about that information. And he, who is a bigger person, doesn't know about it. It's not even possible. It's not possible. So some, to some extent, it was like sarcasm. It wasn't really like, oh, he didn't know who David was. Or he didn't know what David has done. Or he didn't know who David had been. You know, that kind of thing. And who David is going to be eventually. I think it wasn't news anymore because... The time that um, Saul spoke to him, Saul spoke to him in an open place. So a lot of people would have probably heard and all those things. So it's, it's not even possible that they would say that he didn't know. But even if he didn't know, he had the ability to be able to fact check whether David was one of such people who just ran away and didn't want to stay under leadership and is just roaming the, 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 the wilderness and all those kinds of things. He would have known so. And to begin with, I'd even say, Someone who is just roaming the streets, who is just roaming the wilderness, will not be helping other people. That person would surely have to be a very greedy person and will be self-centered and will be concerned about themselves 
and not other people. So the fact that he was already taking care of your sheep bearers or your shepherds and all those things was already a reason enough to tell you that this cannot be that person. So even if it was just a rumor, maybe he just had a rumor that David had been running away from the master and all those kinds of things. He would know for a surety that this kind of person who runs away from his master, who is very self-centered and very selfish, will not be taking care of other people. He would not do that. So yeah, he dealt with him. And he blasted the people and the people went back and David got angry. Don't we all get angry sometimes? Trust me, sometimes people do some things to me. I get so irritated and I want to react. But the Holy Spirit is like, Princess, you ain't going to react. It's not every dog that barks that you pick a stone and start shooting. There are some barks that have nothing to do. They can do nothing. They're just barking. You know I'm going dog the bark. Like they can bark. And sometimes their back is so loud, you begin to think like, oh, it can do, they don't even bite. Gong dog, you know if he bites, it will just back and back and back. Just stamp your, your feet on the ground and see what happens. Even the ones that are real dogs that can bite, you stamp your feet on the ground or you bend to pick a stone. I remember that a lot and lots of dogs around my house, my neighbors have dogs, my colleagues have dogs and other animals like cats and all those things. So when I'm coming back from school, like when they are not yet known me, I'm coming back from school, I'm coming back from work, I'm coming, coming back like a little bit late. They start backing and backing and they're coming towards me and all that kind of thing. Like before I used to be so scared, so freaking scared. But now when they start coming, I just bend out like I'm picking a stone. Come and see the way the things will be running. Even the wild ones will. Come and see the way they will run. Who doesn't like their life? <laughs> so God told me I'm not going to back. That I'm not going to fight that dog. I'm not going to shoot the dog. It's not every back that I must react to. And so this is David who had gotten so irritated and he wanted to go and fight. Funny enough, this was David that every single thing he does, he asks God. But this time around, he was already carried away by what Nabal said. He was probably angry. You know that kind of part where a little bit of that thing gets to you. You're like, does he know who I am? How can this man say he doesn't know me? How can he say that I've run away from my master? How can he say all these things? I would show him who I really am. Don't we all get to that point sometimes before we catch ourselves? We have to. David was human. So sometimes he gets to that point where it's about him, like how he feels and he wants to react based on that. Emotions are a very terrible thing to take decisions on. Your emotions can swap as as fast as you can flip your fingers or you can blink your eyes. That's how much your emotions can. And emotional intelligence teaches you that this is where I am right now. I understand this feeling. I accept this feeling. I acknowledge this feeling. But this is not where I want to be. So where do I want to be? This and this is what I need to do to go to where I want to be. Right now, I'm so mad. Right now, I'm so angry. Right now, I'm so irritated because of what was said about me. But I don't want to be in an irritated zone. I want to be in a happy zone. I want to be in a good zone. I want to be in a joyful zone. What do I need to do? I need to remove my eyes from the problem. I need to see it differently. I need to just be like, Okay, maybe this is God just testing my resolve. Maybe this is God just showing me that I need to be more patient with people. Maybe this is God just showing me just something. Just something. You do something that can move you from that angry stage that you are because you don't want to be there. You don't want that emotion to linger in your heart. You want the emotion of joy, the emotion of peace, of happiness. So what and what and what should I do to get that emotion of peace and happiness? That's exactly what emotional intelligence is all about. You know exactly the emotion you have right now, what is going on in your life. And if it's the right place to be, then you want to stay there. You do things that will cause you to be able to stay there. And if it's not the place where you want to be, then you do all that it takes to cause you to move to the place where you want to be. So this is David. He had gotten all irritated and he was planning to go and deal with Nabal. And then, thank God. Thank God for people who know Nabal's wife. They probably know Nabal's countenance, um, Nabal's personality and his attitude, and they know his wife's attitude. So they go to his wife to tell him, see, we have to be alert. We have to be women in Israel. People can use their abilities as women to do great things, to win battles, silent battles that 
our husbands will never know, that our partners will never know, that our cousins, sisters, brothers, and friends will never know. Women can win those battles. It's a, it's, it's, it's just not, it's just not heard of. It's just unheard of that we're fighting to be men. You cannot be a man and win a man. You can use a man's weapon to get him. You have to use your feminine, your femininity to get a man. They are drawn to femininity. Men are not drawn to men. Men want to battle with men. But men want to be connected to, to a woman's femininity. So stop trying to be a man. I don't know what feminism is all about, but I've heard some really extreme things about some of it. I don't know if that's really what it is because just like in every group and everything, there are people who go the extreme. You know, they'll just go extreme of everything. Something is something else. They're doing something entirely different from what it is. So you can't blame feminism generally, especially if you don't have an overview of what the people who started it um, made it to be. Marriage is beautiful. Marriage is honorable. Marriage is a thing that God connected and related. The only thing that God related to his relationship with us is marriage. So it's a beautiful thing. It cannot be anything less. But are we not having less in marriages today? Are we not having domestic violence? Are we not having very terrible things in marriages? Even in Christian marriages today, emotional violence and what have you, all those many things. But God created it for a good course, for a right purpose. And if we go to God and ask him how it was created or why it was created, we're going to experience the beauty of it and how it's supposed to be um to be run or how it's supposed to be experienced we're going to experience the beauty of it but because we want to do it our way that's why we start getting into lots and lots of trouble so these people knew they um, um nabal's personality they knew his wife's personality thank god for the people who went to his wife and went and told his wife so his wife re-strategized and decided to go and do what she had to do there are some things in this life that when god tells you to do them or when you have a, an instinct or you have that push to go and do them, you don't need to ask anybody's opinion. She didn't need to go and start asking her husband because say, oh, he's the head over you. So you have to do this. You have to ask him everything. You have to tell him everything you want to do. My dear, there are some things you will not tell your spouse, even your spouse. When God has told you, you have to go because God expects but you to carry out that assignment, not your spouse. And if you don't carry it out, you're not going to have your spouse as an excuse. If I, if Abraham did not carry Isaac to go and sacrifice, he would not have any excuse to give about his wife. And we all know, you and I know, even me, I know, say if I be being a Sarah, um, Abraham comes and tells me, uh, Abraham has his faith, all right? So it's good for him. But Abraham comes and tells me, child that I've waited for how many years? 25 years. And will finally give him birth to the child. You say, God say, wait, see. Say, sacrifice, do her. <laughs> Abraham. You go surely first sacrifice me, Sarah, before you get for sacrifice Isaac. That play with the play. So that play for food you want to go corner eye air. So my eye go boss, not be me. Ha! See, what Sarah would have done to <laughs> what Sarah would have done to Abraham, eh? No be yell. <laughs> so you see, the man was already the Nabal guy was already haughty. So going back to him again to go and tell him that you want to go and do this thing, it would just be like are you trying to defile my authority? Are you trying to, like, what are you saying? I've already said I'm not giving this man this thing. What are you even daring to do? But she had it in her heart that she go and stand the gap for her family and for her husband and everything. And she goes there. Hmm. Right? Do man get parole. Hey, yeah. They say men can talk you to do things. Wait, oh. I be a call David Lord like, like 50 times in one sentence. My Lord, let not my Lord, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, you We had no go, come and see Robin of Ego. Hey, a big girl pump David's ego. See, eh, one relationship coach, Mr. Um, Pastor Kingsley. Pastor Kingsley says, men are very transactional. So when they know what they're supposed to gain in a deal, they are on it. Like, you'll be shocked what a man can do today and then tomorrow. It's like he was not even there. It's like I didn't there. Me, this me, like, 
that's why it's easy for men to sleep with women and just get off and go and everything is done and dusted but women are very emotional so they do everything based on emotions oh this is how i feel right now this is it hmm, man transaction what am i gaining here okay this is what i'm gaining this 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 this, this. transaction don't end process don't end and that's why he said a man who wants to marry you from day one that is coming to meet you and talk to you he knows that this one I want to marry and it will not take him more than one year or more than six months to tell you to talk about it that this is what he wants so it is left now for you woman to put these men in your space consciously for a time frame because they can waste your time if they want to the man doesn't need five years he doesn't need four years ten years to know he wants to marry you he knows from day one because it's a transaction. He's coming to you. He knows that this is what you gain. This is what you will lose. This is what you will get or this is what you will not get. He knows it. And so when he's coming to you, he knows all that is the one that is coming and he has made up his mind that he has to marry or is the one. They don't need time as we need time to figure it out and to get it right. And the funny thing is that we women, eh, our intuition is so strong that God makes us know which one is real and which one is not. But for some reason, we keep telling ourselves that, oh, they will change. Don't deceive yourself. Oh. It's, it doesn't work like that. So I beg you go, eh? Ib move paro. Ha! David four. <laughs> you say it's men who speak and women for. This is one woman, eh? Who was a woman with a difference. She massaged David's ego. See what you gain. You will not stain your hand with blood. You are a king that has a reputation. Your reputation has been all over the city. You, you will eventually become king. Hey, la, 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 la. I said they massage David's ego. David said, what? <laughs> what? Where is this woman from? <laughs> David was taken. He was swept off his feet. Ah. Now, about wife, she said all kinds of things, all the nice things about David, how what David has to gain, what he has to lose if he gets into this kind of thing. He says that the man that is already doing this thing is not even is the man is the man's attitude is the way the man is. So David cannot go. It's just like saying that you start fighting with a pig in mud. The pig will be happy. They will be enjoying it, and you go be in trouble. Like they want to see you fighting with a pig inside of mud. Ooh. Who, who is going to look funny? Is it not you? The pig is their normal place to be. Nabal is just doing what he is. He is Nabal. That's his name. Folly is full in his heart. Evil is full in his heart. So he's just doing evil. He's just being himself. But you now, you cannot stoop to his level, my lord. Hey. I said, I bigger call David, my lord, like how many times in just a, a single discussion? David said, now which woman did say? Ha. David said, well, I've listened to your word. I won't do anything stupid. I'm going to go. See, women, we have power, eh? We'll begin to use the power the right way and begin to get the things that we have to get. No fighting here to be men. I don't want to be a man. Me, I like to be wooed. I like to be pursued. I love it. I love it. So I, I don't want to be any man. I don't want to be any of that thing. And so um, I, um, David spoke to, um, Abigail spoke to David. First of all, she had already brought the food, so there was no even there was no need, right? The food is there. This is what they wanted. She had already brought it. So why go and stain your image? Why go and tarnish your image? You know? She just massaged David's ego for him in one way that David could not resist. Oh, I love this girl. I be gone. <laughs> ah Lord, give me wisdom. Give me parole to be an abigail in my time. In the life of every single person that comes to me. That let me be so able to talk sense into people every single time that I meet them. It doesn't only have to be a guy. It could be my friend who wants to take, who wants to do something stupid. Who wants to do something out of place. And I tell you that, no, you can't do this because this is what will happen to you. Because this is what happened. This is what God expects from you as a child of God. Not this one, not this one, not this one. I should be that person that I have parole. That when I talk, they will listen. Hey. I don't know what Eve told Adam. God, God actually showed adam directly the fruit and said don't eat of this fruit and eh? do anything in this garden don't eat on this fruit eve was not there yet so 
basically adam just told eve so let's take that eve did not really understand or something let's just pretend like that which is not true i don't think it's true and then she ate the fruit do you all realize that it wasn't affected when eve ate the fruit it was affected only when adam ate the fruit to whom much is given much more is required eve came if it was already effective if that fruit was already effective adam would have already noticed that she was naked or she would have noticed that adam was naked but no it wasn't affected yet but wait see what on earth did eve tell adam for adam to eat that fruit he's opening his korokoro eyes <laughs> and seeing that this is the fruit that god has said we should not eat and he carried it and cooked ate it why did eve tell him and you say that it's only women. It's really men who talk women and women get into stupidity. Oh my God. They ask that what do this 16-year-old and 15-year-old girls do to these 50-year-old men who go and wipe their bank accounts and give to these small, small girls? People, don't get it twisted. There is something about women that can influence men to do and undo things. You can influence a man to do great things. You can influence a man to do rubbish. You have that power. It is given to you by God. But no, we're fighting to be men instead. Now, now who do we? Who do us like this? So the woman finished doing everything and said, please remember me when you become king. Oh, and this, 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 this. Ah, boom, 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 boom. As soon as the husband died, there'd be no waste time. <laughs> they been a sharp shooter. They, wasting time and faith. As soon as Nabam Fiam, David say, Now go bring me that woman, that woman where it blow my mind. Now go bring her. Now she be that. Now recommendation, no? Now recommendation. Her CV was on point. <laughs> yeah, CV there on point. Like, will people still remember you and want to call you when things are, mm, my God. And they said when the woman told, the husband was living large. He was enjoying. He was feeling happy about himself, feeling full of himself, about the stupidity that he has done, I'm sure. And was getting excited until he was getting drunk. They said the woman said she did not tell him when he was drunk because maybe it would have just been, I mean, she would have raised by fire. She waited when he was sober the next day and told him. And he said he was sad. He was sad because I don't know whether sometimes like the devil just takes hold of you and then uses you to do them really crazy and out of place things. And then when you come back to your senses, you're like me, now me do so. I say anger is one letter short of danger. So when you're angry, don't do anything. It's better to be stagnant and be on one point than to take a step that will take you like 50 steps backward. When you're angry, better don't do anything. When you're sober, then start taking actions and decisions and thinking over the things. So people, that's exactly what we have for today. I don't know about you. If you have any other thing to add, if you have any other thing to say that I've not said yet, please, can you just bring it on and say it in the comment section? And don't forget to share this out. Share, 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 share so that others can come and get blessed. And why not also bless us in the comment section? Because someone could do a reply to a message that I said or to something that I said or to a part that I missed that they thought is very important and diligent for us to add to learn about it. And they can put it in the comment section, but I can't get access to them because I'm not in your audience. I'm not in your audience, but they are in your audience and they need this message and they need to bless us. So it's only by you sharing, which means you're indirectly preaching to the people in your audience that we all can get blessed. Father, we want to thank you for your word. We thank you for blessing us today. We pray that you're going to give us and every one of us an awesome week start. And we pray, oh God, that even as we close this day, where i am right now lord you're going to give us sound sleep and sweet dreams in the mighty name of jesus you're going to give us dreams to so dream dreams and see visions just like you've promised in your word pray for those who are just starting their day today you bless the rest of their day for those who are halfway you bless the remaining part of their day to the glory of your name thank you ancients of days because i know you always hear and answer give us all that it takes to be able to go and conquer our world in jesus name amen i always get to say i love you so so very much but god loves you way way more get to like share 
and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we upload a new video or we get to go live. Of course, we have our audio Bible on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and looking forward to Instagram. Until tomorrow, it's going to be 1 Samuel chapter 26. Ciao, ciao. Mwah. Mom's department, I'm sure she's just laughing right now. She was also saying, ciao, ciao. <laughs>